Okay, number two on the test is another one where you have to establish the identity. Now the last problem that we did, we had to use common denominators. So now this one, to start out with, we probably want to use a different strategy here. Now there's more than one way of solving these, so certainly uh, you could do it a different way than I'm showing here, but as long as you show both sides are equal and your math is correct, then you'll get credit for it. Um, but following our strategies, the first thing we want to think about doing is getting everything in terms of sines and cosines, and that's what we're going to do here. So I want to put the identity in uh, for secant and for tangent to turn those into sines and cosines. For the identity there, we're going to do cosine over 1 over cosine, and then it'll be a minus here. We have uh, minus sine theta over cosine theta, and we're not going to do anything with the right-hand side. So that's our first step uh, if we do this. Next thing we, uh, we want to do is common denominators, if you see two fractions. Now these happen to already have common denominators, so we don't have to do any more work with that. All we have to do is combine that together as a single fraction. So we're going to do cosine on top, on the bottom, 1 minus sine theta over cosine theta. And then we get uh, that as our next step. So we combine it together as a single fraction. Now what we have is a fraction over a fraction. So we want to flip and multiply the fractions. And so I'm going to continue this kind of over here, so it kind of goes down and it goes down this way. Uh, I'm going to have cosine on top, cosine theta over 1 is the, the fraction you have on top there. We're going to multiply this by the reciprocal of this one, which is cosine over 1 minus sine theta. Doing this, we're going to multiply it across the top, across the bottom. So if, you, if you're multiplying fractions, you don't need common denominators. So we're just going to multiply it across. We get cosine squared. And across the bottom, we get 1 minus sine theta. And we get 1, uh, we want to show that it equals one, uh, 1 plus sine theta here. Now, if you get all the way down and you don't know where to go next. So for instance, uh, our strategy that we talked about before, uh, Common denominators we don't have, we already have one. It's already in terms of sines and cosines. No factoring we can do here. If we try and multiply both sides by a conjugate, uh, we're going to get kind of a mess on top. So if you run through all those and none of them look like it, uh, you can apply it to this one. Then you want to start looking for your, look at your list of identities and see if there's an identity you can put in there uh, so that way we can continue the problem uh, down and finish it. I want to find an identity to change out cosine into a sine because since I got to get sine on this side and I have a sine down below, then I want to change that into a sine. Uh, so if I look at my list of identities, the one that works will be cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. So I'm going to put one, the identity 1 minus sine squared here and I have 1 minus sine down below and on the other side I have 1 plus sine. Now, Here's a common mistake that I see students making at this. The students will sometimes cross cancel the signs. Now you can't do that because you have a minus sign separating it. So you're never able to cross cancel like that. Cross cancel and then sometimes I see kind of like the, the magic wand kind of answer where we just wave a magic wand and instantly it just turns into one plus sign equals one plus sign. If you just put one plus sign down here, you didn't show me enough work. To get from here to here, there's an step, extra step you have to do in order to make that happen, and that's the last one that you have to show. And I'll show that over here uh, on this side. What you want to do on this, the correct way of doing that, is to factor it. So we're going to do 1 minus sine x, and then we have 1 plus sine x, or theta. I should make sure I use the right variables here, so you should be thetas all the way down. And then on the bottom I have 1 minus sine theta. And again, I'm trying to equal this to be 1 plus sine theta. So I need to show that step there, the factoring step, because that way then, I, then it tells me how I go from here to here. Because if I showed this in class, I just said, all right, then this simplifies down to 1 plus sine, you might not know how I got to that step. Same idea when you turn this in to me, you have to you want to show to me that uh, show me that you understand how all this works and how you're getting from one side to the other because this whole thing is going to be the answer that you're doing. 
you're going to cancel out the one minus sines, and then we do get both sides equal. One plus sine theta equals one plus sine theta. So again, make sure you show all the steps here uh, to where you get one side equal to the other side.